Hello, a very warm welcome indeed to this virtual choral even song beginning seventh week of Trinity term on this day known as the first Sunday after Trinity at St. Hughes College in the University of Oxford. We are in a period in the church known as ordinary time, which lasts for a number of months. We are so glad that you've joined us for this annual Leavers service even song. Our very special guest speaker each year is, as today, our principal. Dame Ailey Shangiolini. She has been principal of St. Hugh's College since 2012. Previously the Lord Advocate of Scotland, she continues to have a distinguished career in law and of course as principal of our college. All that you need you will find on your screen including any words to follow and you're welcome to join in with us. We start with our usual traditional greeting. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. We begin with our opening hymn.
And to the Holy Spirit.
has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go out and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be with you. And with my spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy, have mercy upon us. O oh Lord, show thy mercy upon us. Ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, 
save thy people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, make clean our hearts within us. asked me to address our leaving students as he does each year and each year ruminate on what really should I share with a group of folk who probably know a great deal more than I ever did at the age of 21 to 23. Before I do speak I'd like to take this opportunity of thanking very sincerely Sean and Adina for all the support and love that they've given to our students throughout what has been a really tough year and for the great comfort of beautiful evensong services. I'd also like to thank our wonderful choir, again, during the dark, chilly nights of the winter and indeed the chilly spring that we had. Our choir were absolutely wonderful and it was just so wonderful to have that experience on a Sunday evening before you set off for the rest of the week. When I find myself in this situation, I'm conscious of the danger of patronising you, as I, as I mentioned. And also of ruminating on what really I would like to have had shared with me at the, the, at the same point in my life before I set off in my career and into the blue wide yonder. You would of course expect me to wish you every success for your careers and every happiness and of course I undoubtedly do that. But I really don't think those are the most important things that I could wish you because much more than that I wish you lifelong serenity, inner peace strength and resilience to be able to deal with the great happiness that I hope life will bring you, but also the sadness and the tragedy that inevitably it will also bring. And an ability to be able to deal with those and recognise them as part of the great tapestry that is our lives. 
When I was just 24, on July the 30th, I was setting out for my office. I'd just started as an apprentice lawyer with the Crown Office in Edinburgh. And I was heading towards Waverley Station with two big bags of books I had to read a very important murder case. And I was fraught about making sure I made a good impression, thinking about all the little things that I hadn't done in relation to taking it home to Glasgow to make sure that I got it all right the next day. My mind was full of this as I rushed down because I was late for the train. And then someone passed by and gave me a lift down, making sure that I got that train. And I was very grateful to them. When I got on the train, it was the 5.30 train from Edinburgh, Waverley to Glasgow, Queen Street. And halfway through that train journey, the train was in a dreadful disaster. A cow came onto the line and 13 of the passengers, 12 of whom were in my coach at the very front of the train because I'd been no seats and I walked all the way to the front. And 12 were killed and 61 people seriously injured in that. And I was one of these seriously injured individuals. And therefore I spent the next three weeks in the hospital and following that, recovering from those injuries. It wasn't how I anticipated my career would start. It wasn't how I anticipated life would start. And what I recognised, both in the moment when the disaster was about to happen, was not fear, but absolute determination that I was going to live. That strength that came to me at that moment because of that desperate and natural instinctive need to survive and, and I think that drives so many of us and gives us that strength but it's something that we lose sight of in the passage of every day. I realised that there had been suddenly no anxiety, nothing other than a sense of huge relief and great gladness that I was still there, that I was still able to take in and soak in the joy of life and the simple things in life and a lot of the fears and anxieties I had before simply dissipated, they disappeared, the papers were completely lost and life still went on. So the, the, the point of me referring to that is that sometimes it takes some major jolt in life to make you actually realise, come back and to realise what really is important, what are the things that matter, and how you can gain really great pure joy and strength from life. And that happened with that incident in my life because it did change the way in my perspective of things. And of course life again comes back in and you begin to worry again about all sorts of things that take life. And to try and interrupt that process, each day I ask God to inspire me, to give me peace. I ask him to make sure I make the right decisions. Uh, and I ask him all to protect all of those that I know and that I don't know. Uh, and that hope, that aspiration is something which carries me through every day and also brings me back to the moment of inner peace that I found after surviving that great disaster. The, one of the great poets that I, I sometimes refer to uh, when I, again, have a sense of maybe losing that sensation is William Butler Gates and his wonderful poem, The Lake Isle of Innisfree. And William Butler Gates' poem starts, and I'll just read it to you. I will arise and go now and go to Innisfree and the small cabin build there of clay and wattles made. Nine bean rows will I have there, and a hive for the honey bee, and live alone in the bee loud glade. And I shall have some peace there, for peace comes dropping slow, dropping from the veils of the morning to where the cricket sings. There midnight saw a glimmer, and noon a purple glow, an evening full of the linnet's wings. I will arise and go now, for always night and day I hear lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore. While I stand on the roadway or on the pavement grey, I hear it in the deep heart's core. Last April, last March, we had another jolt to our lives. Covid came about and suddenly our lives were put into a state of turmoil. Our students were told to clear out the university, instantly get home, be safe. And since then, life has not been the same for anyone. It's been filled with tragedy and worry and anxiety for many families and worry about jobs and livelihoods. And again, it's been during that period that I've been able to set aside what would be all the normal things taking place in life and have more time and found in the solitude that COVID has brought 
again, the opportunity to search very, very deeply for that inner peace and inner strength that we all need to get through this. And that can be from simply listening to the bird song, listening to the laughter of students as they pass by the, the outside of the house in the evenings, the snowball fights, which I, I watched in, in the winter with great hilarity. Just watching, looking at the flowers, examining the leaves, looking at the sky and the clouds, all of this in amongst a very busy, frantic day can bring back that sense of serenity and peace that I hope for you. No one will believe this, but I also have produced handmade birthday cards, and particularly my family. These are the originals. Uh, as you can see, they're extraordinarily talented. But that's the sort of activity I would never have contemplated I was ever capable of. And I can assure you my family were deeply shocked, A, that I remembered their birthdays, and B, that I had made them their own personalised cards. So that's what COVID brought about for me. The other important aspect of, of what we've experienced is that learning to be grateful for everything we have, the simple things in life that make life so much of a joy. And so I wish you all very long and very serene lives. I hope that when you look outside of your own problems and gain an understanding of the peace that you get from the everyday, from the little gems in life that are there, if only, only we look. Take care, all of you. Have a wonderful summer. And for those of you who will not see for many years to come, have a wonderful life. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for our seventh and penultimate Coral Evensong of Trinity term and for the entire academic year for the occasion of our Leavers Evensong. Thanks to all who have contributed, including our choir with Dan Chambers, John T. Watt, Gian Lee and Tara Kobayashi, and our Choral Award holders, Violine, Justin, Molly and Sophie for the music and the wonderful singing and for a prelude and postlude by Alex Brantz, and to Violine, of course, for our reading. Special thanks to our principal, Dame Ailish Angiolini, for her wonderful address on Lever's Evensong Sunday. Please note that for the final two Sundays of term, including this evening, there will be no drinks by Zoom after the services. Next week, we'll be back on Sunday for our final Evensong of term and of the entire academic year. We hope that you will join us then. Our traditional ending, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.